All right. Hello, everyone. Um, looks like we got some people coming in bit by bit. Uh, for those of you who may not know me, uh, my name is Darian Roberts. I'm a keyboard instructor at School of Rock, Alexandria. Um, and I'm here to do a master class on an intro to synth programming and sound design. So let me turn over to, uh, first let me screen share. Only host, yeah, okay. Darren, um, I can go at um, 7, uh, 15 or so. Okay. Sorry about that. But. That's all right. Uh, can you all see my slideshow? Yep. Okay. Yes, thank you. Cool. Perfect. Because um, for my screen, it just shows my face. And it, it, so I, I don't see that it's showing this, the slideshow. But if you guys can see it, then we're all good. Uh, all right, so we're going to talk about how keyboards and synths create uh, sound. This is what we're going to go over. We're going to go first, the basics. What is a sound wave? Uh, we're going to talk about its shape, its amplitude, frequency, and we'll learn what all these terms mean as we go along. Um, basic parts of a synth. This is what inside of the synth creates the sound wave. Uh, and then synths are different depending on who makes them and what model they are. And they allow us to do different things depending on how they're created. Um, and we'll talk about that and what the differences are as well. Um, and then uh, before the time allowing section, we're going to hop over to uh, the other screen that you see here, which is uh, right here. It's my keyboard screen that allows us to... Uh, take an in-depth look at what we've learned and use it to actually create a sound. And then if we have time, we'll go to this other section, time allowing with, uh, with all this extra stuff that goes into uh, making a, a synth sound um, sound better, more professional, fancier, if you will. Uh, so these are some examples of some basic sound waves. A sound wave is literally air vibrating in a wave shape and that's how sound is created the air vibrates it goes into our ears and our ears pick up that vibration and our brains interpret it as sound um, so these are some different shapes of waves and they're they're color coded as you can see the red one being the sine that's what a sine wave looks like um, it's just kind of a basic curved uh, wave triangle at the bottom the purple one it Looks like a triangle, so it's aptly named. Uh, the green sawtooth uh, looks like a triangle, except you'll notice that one side is one edge of the curve is diagonal, and the other edge goes like pretty much straight down. Um, so it's like a triangle, but it's a little bit altered uh, so that it sounds sharper, no pun intended. Uh, and then square is also aptly named because it looks like a square. Um, now pulse I have highlighted in blue because pulse is the same thing as a square wave except um, a pulse wave doesn't have to be perfect squares. A pulse wave can be more rectangular in, in either direction. It can be a nice skinny rectangle or like a big wide one. Um, either way, when the pulse width is a perfect square we just call that a square wave and the shape of the wave determines the tone of the sound so like a trumpet can play an a or a violin can play an a but they'll sound different because they're different instruments and that's because the shapes of the waves that they make have different uh different uh different shapes uh amplitude is if you look at the wave it's how high and low the the wave appears to be but don't let that fool you it's not about pitch it's not about high and low as in oh that's not what amplitude is amplitude is how loud the sound will be uh, frequency though how often do we get a full cycle that's what determines pitch 
So if I have a really quick wave, that's going to be a nice high pitch. If I have a if I have a a longer wave that only goes a few times per second, that's going to be a really low pitch. Um, so those are just kind of the basic aspects of sound waves. So parts of a synth. How how do we have this computer, this synthesizer that creates this sound wave? Um, the three basic parts that I want to talk about first are an oscillator, a filter, and an amp. An oscillator is what synthesizes the wave shape. It kind of uses a uses a computer to generate this shape, and that's all it does. Um, and an oscillator alone can't make any sound. That's what the amp is for. The amp is the last step, and that is what turns the turns the wave into an actual sound. It's what creates sound, much like an amp, like a guitar amp, you know, makes it louder. The amp here controls the volume of the sound coming from the wave. Now the filter, the step in the middle, I, uh, I put down editing tone. A filter is interesting because it, uh, it is a step in between the oscillator and the amp. And what it does is it lets, um, depending on the kind of filter, it'll let high frequencies through and cut out low frequencies, or it'll do the opposite, let high, uh, cut out the high frequencies and let the low frequencies through. Um, a low pass filter, which is on the diagram there, is the kind that allows low frequencies to go through, but it cuts out the highs. Um, so every sound has, has a kind of a range of frequency where there are, higher ends, lower ends, there's stuff in the middle, and uh, the filter can kind of control what exactly you want to actually come through and it can cut out some other frequencies. And we'll take a, a deeper look at that when we actually make a sound later. Uh, so keyboards. Um, the picture here is uh, a picture of the Korg Kronos, which is the keyboard that I have here that we're looking at the screen of. And so, that's that's what we're going to be using to look at the different parts of the synth and making a sound. Um, so some of the differences between keyboards, we got user interface. This is basically uh, on this keyboard, the screen. Some keyboards don't have screens, but in this case, the user interface is accessible by a screen. So the screen lets us go to the different places of the synth and control the different uh, parameters, we call them, or the like, uh, the sign square you know the the shape of the wave or the volume or the filter these are all parameters that we can edit in the user interface um, and different keyboards have different user interfaces meaning you find the different parameters in different places but a lot of keyboards share the same parameters even if they don't have the same user interface the same way to find things they still have those things in common the oscillator the filter the amp, they still have all those things. You just find them in different ways depending on the user interface. Um, so controllers, when I say controllers, um, I'm not talking about a MIDI controller, which some of you may uh, be familiar with that term, but uh, I'm talking about all the knobs, sliders, gadgets, and gizmos on a keyboard. All those little buttons and stuff you see on the picture of the keyboard, those are controllers and they let us control different aspects of the synth uh, very easily in real time. Like while we're playing, we can turn a knob and adjust the filter on, on the synth sound. Um, and then capabilities. Um, now what I mean by that is some keyboards, even though they'll all have the same kind of like, this is the oscillator, this is the amp, this is the filter, they, some of them allow us to control certain aspects of it, and some keyboards don't. They don't let us control these aspects. Um, and so usually more expensive, like higher end keyboards will give you more control. Um, I, honestly, this keyboard, I love this keyboard that I have right here, the Kronos, the, the one in the picture. Um, it allows for so much control, and I, I, I like control. I like kind of micromanaging my sound. So it's a, it's a good fit for me. Um, oh, something happened with my mouse. There we go. Okay. Extras. We'll get into this stuff after, um, 
we talk about after we talk about this uh, sound that we're going to make on the keyboard. All right, what time is it? That's 7.13, awesome. So if I go back to Zoom here, oh, okay, stop share, there we go, awesome. So I'm still figuring out this Zoom thing. It's uh, it's the first masterclass, I'm, I'm the guinea pig, you know, it's uh, just a way to figure things out. Um, and then I want to spotlight the screen of my keyboard, awesome. So you guys can all uh, see this uh, this screen here it says initial EXI program at the top um, or in it EXI program it abbreviates things. Um, so I just took the keyboard and I went to a blank sound. This is like the a brand new like simplest sound you can get. It sounds like this. Uh, let me volume a little bit. So I just played C, D, E, F, G, um, and I'll, I'll be playing various things just to get an idea of what it sounds like as we go along. Um, so let's look at the parts of the synth that we talked about. Um, so first, oscillators. So if I go to uh, this tab down here. Perfect. We see oscillator one, OSC is an abbreviation for oscillator, and oscillator two. So this sound can have two oscillators at one time. Um, so just for the sake of ease, we're going to make both the oscillators the same. Uh, so we have wave shape to start with, the waveform. I am preferential towards uh, squares. I love this, the sound of a good uh, square wave. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to pulse on both of the oscillators. So this, so I have two pulses going on at the same time. Um, now pulse width by default is 50. Now in this keyboard, a 50 pulse width means a perfect square wave. Remember I talked about how we have a, uh, a pulse wave is, is blocky and rectangular. And if the pulse width is, makes it a perfect square, we call it a square wave. That's what the default is here when we select pulse. It has, uh, it has a perfect square shape. Um, all right, bye Casper. Um, so, bye. <laughs> so we've got this, uh, this dual oscillator thing going on now. Um, you see that we have octave and transpose on each of these oscillators. So what we can do is we can adjust the octave that they're in, or we can just transpose them by half steps. Um, it's not something you do like every time you make a sound, but it is something that comes in handy if you want to uh, make the two oscillators do something different, um, different pitches that is. So if I play this right now, you can already tell it sounds a little different from before, and that's because we changed them to pulse waves. So if I were to change the octave of one of these, by pressing a button that's off screen, I adjust the parameter. So I moved one of them up an octave. Um, hold on. Okay, they're both equal, cool. Um, so I'm gonna bring that back down. And I'm going to try transposing this by a perfect fifth up. Uh, some of you um, may be familiar with intervals. Um, if you're not, that's okay. Just know it's, it's seven half steps up. So I'm going to have one oscillator be at a pitch here, and the other oscillator is going to be up here. So if I play that, That's what that sounds like. You can tell there's 
there's two different pitches going at the same time. And when I change what note I'm playing, uh, both oscillators move, but one of them will always be seven half steps above what I'm playing. So that's what the transpose function will do on one of the oscillators. Um, I'm gonna bring that back down to zero. So we have both oscillators doing the same thing. Um, there's a mixer here. Some of you might be familiar with what a mixer is. A mixer is like a, a soundboard kind of, where you control uh, the levels of the different parts of what you're doing. A lot of times this is used by sound guys, uh, like in a live show or a studio. Um, they have microphones recording the instruments and then they control the levels of each instrument with the, with the microphones on a soundboard. This is kind of the same thing in the keyboard. We can control the volume and stuff of the, of the different oscillators. So you see oscillator one, oscillator two. Um, this is some other stuff we'll get into if we have time afterwards. Uh, it's basically more features that you can use the level function uh, to turn up and put into the sound if you want, but you don't have to. Um, you just need an oscillator. You don't even need two oscillators. You could, in fact, I'm going to, I'm gonna turn this one off by putting its level at zero. Just for the sake of simplicity, we have one oscillator going right now, one square wave. Um, so other things we can adjust with the oscillators, if we go to the pitch common tab, um, this is mostly for controllers on the keyboard. Like you see here, um, there's LFO, which we might learn about later, but it has uh, JS or joystick plus Y intensity. That's basically a thing you can do with a controller on the keyboard. Um, and you can adjust what it does by clicking there and adjusting that uh, level. Um, so moving on from there, we got the filter that we talked about. Um, so the basic tab has just the basics of this filter. This is a picture of the filter. Um, so right now, all of the frequencies in the square wave are coming through equally. That's what the straight line means. Um, so we can adjust that. We can take the frequency of the cutoff. That's the cutoff frequency. That's what that's called. And when we adjust it, it all, well, I'll show you when I adjust it. So I'm going down. See how the, uh, the shape of the filter is moving like that? That's because I'm lowering the frequency threshold. I'm lowering the cutoff frequency so that um, the lower that frequency is, the lower the maximum frequency of the sound is. So right now, if I were to play the keyboard, it sounds a lot uh, darker and calmer uh, because I've cut out a lot of those harsh high frequencies. Now, a lot of times I don't want to cut out that much. I just, I exaggerated to show the difference. Um, so I'm going to bring it back up, not quite all the way, but maybe, maybe about there. So I cut out some of the highs and for contrast, this is with the highs. And this is with some of them cut out. I'm gonna to go to 65. Um, and then let's see. Resonance is just adding shape to the filter. It's just another shape control where if I add it, it'll put a little spike by the frequency, by the cutoff frequency. So that's what it sounds with a high resonance. Um, so this is kind of how the filter works and what it looks like. Um, cool, I think that covers the basics of a filter. I'm gonna bring the resonance down because I don't want quite so high a resonance. Cool. Um, the amp. The amp is pretty 
uh, basic at its at, at face value. It just controls the volume. That, that's really all an amp does um, in the keyboard. Um, okay, bye guys. Sorry, someone else uh, has to leave right now. But yeah, let's keep going. Let's keep looking at this, uh, this synth and we'll learn about some more parts. So this is the amp. Um, we've got amp level right here. That's the volume. So I can just, uh, I can even drag it, make it softer. So it gets louder as I bring it up. Um, there's drive and low boost, things that uh, a lot of times are found maybe on a, on a guitar amp, like drive. Uh, low boost is just kind of a, a boost to the lower frequencies. Um, and then pan. Pan is really interesting. Pan is an aspect that controls uh, what side the sound comes from, left or right. So right now it's set at C64. That's a code for exactly in the center. Now, if I were to uh, move this, you see it changed to L when I go left and then R when I go to the right for left and right respectively. Um, I'm gonna put it back to center. I only have one speaker here that it's coming through so it's gonna sound like center no matter what. Um, but if you have like uh, multiple outputs of the keyboard or if you're playing through speakers like a speaker system uh, that has sides, you'd hear that if I panned it all the way left, we call it hard left, it only come from the left side. And same if you pan hard right, only comes from the right side. So that's what pan does on a keyboard. And a lot of keyboards will let you control this function as well as volume. Um, so I think that about covers the basics that we have discussed so far. And it looks like we still have a good amount of time left. So let's go back to the um, to the slide cool so these are some extras that we're going to talk about um, first thing is an envelope an envelope is actually a really important part of the synth um, a lot of synths will have knobs that you can turn like a row of usually eight knobs uh, sometimes four but uh, typically a good keyboard will have eight um, and four of those knobs are usually assigned to these four aspects that make up an envelope an envelope is basically something uh, that controls uh, a level over time so it might not be volume level. It could be the level of any parameter, uh, basically. So if I, if I did it to volume, which I'm going to do because that's it's easiest to show when it's on volume. Um, volume, if you remember, is controlled by the amp, which we're already on the page for. So I'm going to stay on this amp tab. Um, and I'm going to go to the amp EG tab, which stands for envelope generator. So this... Um, I don't know how well you can see the envelope. Oh yeah, you can see the envelope there. Um, and I'll, I'll go back and spotlight that screen in a bit so we can kind of take a closer look. But as far as the slide is concerned right now, there are four parts, four main parts to an envelope. Attack, decay, sustain, and release. Um, and you'll see on a lot of keyboards, they have four knobs, like I said, that are each labeled. They're labeled attack, decay, sustain, and release. And you can adjust them while you're playing to do, uh, to affect these parts of the sound. So if you ever, you know, come into School of Rock, see the keyboard there and see all these knobs and stuff uh, and sliders and what have you, uh, this, this is the kind of stuff they do. This is, you ever wondered, you know, oh, what, gosh, what does this button do? What does this knob do when I turn it? Uh, this, this is what it does. Uh, so an envelope for volume, 
uh, it will control the level. So up in, it's like a graph. Sorry to bring you to math class, but it's, it's, it's like a graph. Um, so going up, we have amplitude as it's labeled on the slide. Uh, so basically level. And then going across, we have time. So as time progresses, this is how the level will go. And the graph starts when I press a key down, when I press a key on the keyboard. So every time I press the key, this envelope is triggered. Um, so the envelope starts when I press the key, it reaches a maximum volume or maximum level. It goes down a little bit. Usually, usually this is the general shape. It goes down a little bit and hits a sustain level. The sustain level is basically um, the level at which it will stay if you're holding down the key. Decay, I kind of glossed over decay because all, de all decay is is the time it takes. Uh, same with attack, attack is a time. So attack time is the time it takes to reach the maximum. Decay is the time it takes after the maximum to reach the sustain. Sustain is a level though, not a time. Sustain will last as long as you hold the key down. So sustain is that level. And then I can't see it because my screens are blocking it, but uh, you can see decay there on the graph. Um, and that will, uh, that's, or sorry, not decay. Release is the last one. Release is how long after you lift off the key does the sound last while it's fading out to nothing. Eventually it'll go to nothing. Um, so you can control different aspects of all these uh, factors that create the envelope in this keyboard on this screen right now. Um, and we'll get into that in a sec. Um, but if I were to do like a long attack time, for example, this is with a, an immediate attack on the amp. If I went to the amp and I took attack time and I increased it, I don't know if you can see the graph very well right now, but the attack time went from straight up to diagonal. And what that does is it makes it do this. Or if I do it even longer, So see how the sound started really soft and it built in volume until it reached the maximum and then it'll go to a sustain level. So I increase the attack time. I increase the time it takes for that sound to fade in and start and get to the maximum volume. Um, I'm gonna bring that back to zero for now. Um, <clears throat> Let's talk about LFOs. It stands for low frequency oscillator. Now we talked about oscillators and how they make a wave, right? They make the waveform. A low frequency oscillator is exactly what the title suggests. It's an oscillator that makes a waveform, but normally an oscillator will make a waveform that goes at a frequency so fast that it makes a sound, right? Um, a low frequency oscillator makes it at a much, much lower frequency, so slow that you can't hear it. It doesn't make a sound. Um, so you might be saying, well, what's the point? You know, if it doesn't make a sound, why does it exist? Why, why do we have low frequency oscillators? I'll tell you why. Low frequency oscillators have a, a function that is controlling other parameters, uh, much like an envelope, how you set an envelope, there are, there are envelopes for like amp or filter, um, or you can assign an, an envelope to control something else. Low frequency oscillators work the same way. Um, they can control things, they're usually used to control pitch. Um, so if you, if you think about it, and you really consider what will happen if you assign a low frequency oscillator to pitch, uh, you think, okay, an oscillator, 
It's going up and down. If you make that pitch, then the pitch will go up and down as well. Um, so I'm going to go to the – actually, first I have to go to the pitch tab. Um, and so it's already selected at LFO1. Intensity. Let's look at LFO1. I don't know how well you can see this, but if I go to LFO1, it's a triangle wave. Let's make it a sine wave just to make it a little simpler, or at least sound a little simpler. Um, so I go back to the pitch. This is without the LFO. And then I assign the pitch to match the LFO. See so here how the how it was wiggling like that. That's what the LFO does when you assign it to pitch, because um, the pitch is now oscillating. It's going back and forth, uh, and you can set it to go to. You can set the amplitude of the LFO just like an oscillator has amplitude. Uh, a low frequency oscillator does as well. So you can set that. the The amplitude though will affect. Uh, let's let's keep with the pitch example. An os a low frequency oscillator on pitch. If you make the amplitude bigger, um, it'll affect how drastically does the pitch wiggle? How drastically does it change? So I can, right now, that was a half step. That was just a half step of vibrato is basically what it is uh, on the sound. I can make that go like half an octave. <laughs> And, and it's much more drastic. Um, if you made it an octave, it'll start to sound like kind of a sound effect, really. It kind of sounds starting to sound like like a siren or something. Like it's uh, it's very drastic. So usually, when we talk about uh, using a low frequency oscillator for vibrato. We're going to have it be uh, not that much amplitude. So we're going to have it be like a little bit, not even a half step, like just a fraction of a half step. Um, I'm going to set it at 0.1 half steps. That's a little bit of vibrato. We would have made it 0.5 half steps. Okay. So I'm going to set the default to 0.1 half steps. And then uh, there's a function on here. Uh, if you might remember, I mentioned earlier, there's a joystick plus Y function. That just means there's a joystick on the, on the keyboard. And I'm going in the Y axis, so towards or away from me. And plus means that it's going away from me. So when I take the joystick and push it away from me, um, it'll control this LFO if I put a number in there. Right now it's at zero, so it's not going to do anything. So if I set the uh, joystick plus Y intensity, that's what we call the parameter, to oh, whoops, 0.4 half steps, um, I'm going to play to the note. Right now it'll have a little bit of vibrato, and then I'll push the joystick away from me, and it'll increase the vibrato until we get to 0.5, because I have 0.1 and 0.4 together, they'll be 0.5. Um, so here we go, this is what it would sound like. And if I made that a little more drastic to be a little bit more obvious, So I kind of exaggerated that time just to show the effect. Um, I'm going to keep it at the smaller version though, because usually when we when we do vibrato, like when we're singing or playing guitar or violin or whatever it may be, we usually don't want it to be that drastic. Same with synths, um, unless we're going for like an effect. Uh, if we're just playing a sound and we want to just do vibrato on a note, um, we're just we're just going to do it kind of subtly. Um, Alternate modulation source or AMS. So 
I don't know if this term is used by a lot of keyboard brands, but Korg, the brand that makes this keyboard, uses this term, alternate modulation source, as just a fancy way of saying uh, what is controlling what. The alternate modulation source is like um, an LFO or an envelope. These can be all AMSs, alternate modulation sources. Um, so basically, if I go to pitch and I set an alternate modulation source to an envelope, that envelope will now control pitch as well. Um, or, you know, as well. I mean, if it's controlling multiple things, it can, it can do that. Um, but if I assign, if the only thing it's assigned to is pitch, then that envelope is just going to control pitch. Normally, we have LFOs controlling pitch um, if for like vibrato, if we want it. Uh, alternate modulation source on an envelope. Uh, I mean, alternate modulation source, if I set the AMP AMS to be um, an LFO, what do you think will happen? Well, we have an AMP, if you remember, it controls volume, and an LFO, which makes things wiggle. So the volume will actually go up and down with the low frequency oscillator. Um, so I'll show you what that sounds like. Um, if I go to the amp and I say, okay, AMS, I go to LFO three, shall we say. I go to LFO three, it says triangle wave. So this is what it sounds like. Right now it's super fast. Oh, actually, you know what? That's just the vibrato. I haven't actually controlled the intensity of it. So I have to say, okay, I have to confirm, yes, the LFO is going to affect the amp. Now it should do it. So that sounds like an effect some of you may know called a tremolo. Um, a lot of guitarists know about this effect. Um, it's basically when the volume oscillates like that. Wow, 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 wow. Except faster than that usually. Um, I can control the frequency of this tremolo by, um, by adjusting the frequency of the LFO. So if I take the LFO frequency and I bring it down, That's what it would sound like. Now the level is oscillating at a slower pace. Um, I don't really want a tremolo on my sound, so I'm gonna take that off. Uh, but it's, it's good to know how these things can work. So I'm gonna take that off, bring that back down to zero. Okay. Um, step sequencers. I have here automatic music question mark. A step sequencer is interesting. On a lot of uh, um, analog synths, modular synths, which are like uh, synths that were kind of made before digital synths, there's basically two types of synths, analog and digital. Some are hybrid, but analog is like, okay, we make the waveform, right? The oscillator makes the waveform. Digital, it's like, it's done on a computer. Um, so analog actually has the wiggling and a, a digital, a computer will generate these waves. Um, it's kind of a subtle difference, but they have different qualities. Uh, for instance, an analog synth can go out of tune, just like a guitar. Um, so that's an, uh, that's an extra added challenge to playing an analog synth sometimes, um, if, it's, if it's kind of an early on, early model, uh, they'll go out of tune. So, why am I bringing this up? Well, step sequencers on analog synths are kind of uh, a lot of times big and bulky. One of the advantages of digital synths is that it's all crammed into this little computer and you can just press some buttons and make it, and there's usually a screen and it'll be easy to use the step sequencer. Uh, on a modular synth or an analog synth, one of them, 
um, a step sequencer usually is pretty limited, but what it does is it has so-called steps and it's kind of like an LFO, how it goes up and down, but you can control each steps level in time. So like I, if I had 16 steps, I can make the first one really high, second one really low, third one, you know, somewhere in the middle and it'll, over time, it'll play each of those. And I can assign this to anything I want. I can assign it to pitch. So it'll do a high pitch, low pitch, medium pitch. I can do it to um, uh, volume. I can do, yeah, I can do it to volume, which is basically, do I play a note or not? If I turn it all the way down, if I make a step zero, um, it won't play a note. And some synths will have these step sequencers, not all of them, but if it has a, st a step sequencer, you can kind of make a sequence of kind of music, you know, and it'll, it'll play through the sequence. And then when it's done, it'll go back to the beginning and it'll make a loop, uh, which is probably a more familiar term, um, more accessible term uh, than step sequencer. Um, putting keyboards, that's usually what they're called. Uh, I can show you an example of one later if we have time. There is one in my keyboard. It is uh, a little bit tricky to maneuver, but I th if we have time, I'll show you how it works. Um, other extras, additional oscillators. Remember how in the beginning of this session, we had two oscillators going? Some synths have even more. There are, uh, I, th I think up on, on this keyboard, you can do up to four main oscillators, um, depending on how you set up the sound. But a sub oscillator is a specific kind of oscillator that is uh, um, used generally as a lower frequency than the main sound. So if I have a sound playing an A, uh, I was almost there. A ha, and a sub oscillator will go ha. So it'll play usually an octave or two octaves or wherever. It'll play below that sound. Um, so if I go back to the mixer on here, um, there's a sub oscillator. And if I turn that up, Now there's some lower end. There's actually a lower note that's playing along with the main note. Um, I'm going to turn that off because I don't really want it right now. Um, but that's what that is. There's noise generators as well. Now noise is exactly what it sounds like. It's not a note per se. It's more like just like white noise or pink noise. There are different like so-called colors of noise that have different qualities. I'm not an expert on the differences between them, but uh, most commonly it's white noise. And if we take the noise generator, which this keyboard has, and we bring it up. I hope you heard uh, over the Zoom speakers that there was some noise brought in and then I took it back out. Um, so that's kind of like, you may think, you know, why would you want to put noise in your sound? Well, sometimes it's used as like a, a grit kind of effect, like a distortion almost, or, or a buzz. Um, in early synth days, uh, back a couple decades, they would use it for like synthesizing snare sounds or hi-hat sounds. They would take a noise generator. Um, adjust the envelopes so that it was real quick like a and you'd have kind of a um like a snare sound if it was kind of a medium pitch like or you can make it really high and and even shorter to make like and you can kind of have that as a hi-hat combine the two and you have a little drum beat going on Um, I can't do that very well on this keyboard just because I only have so many <laughs> noise oscillators and so many envelopes and stuff to work with. 
um, and the sequencer is, um, like I said, a little difficult to maneuver. But uh, people used to to mimic drum tones using these synthesizers because because they didn't want to uh, record real drums because their recording capabilities were limited. They didn't have the technology. Uh, so they, this was their best way, like in a video game, for example, this was the best way to be like, okay, I want a drum beat in this video game. How do I make it? How do I do it? How is it going to be played? Because a lot of video games were lim limited to like, you know, 8-bit, 16-bit. Um, so they had some limitations to work with. And so that's what these kind of different aspects of the additional oscillators are for. Um, effects we can get into in a in a bit when we go back to the screen. Uh, we have about ten minutes left, so I want to I do want to go back to the screen and go over some of this stuff, um, just to kind of help visualize and see what it looks like on the on the keyboard screen. Um, <clears throat> there are different kinds of effects. Uh, guitarists, I'm sure, will uh, at least like guitarists who've been who are gear nerds or, you know, able to, like who've been working with effects for a long time. I'm sure they'll be able to talk your ear off for days about effects and not just guitarists. I'm picking on guitarists, but um, like audio engineers, like, you know, people who work with editing sound know about effects like compressor EQ EQ is, is kind of like how the filter cut out certain frequencies EQ can boost or cut uh, different frequencies along the spectrum. Um, chorus delay is, is literally, um, if I play a note, if there's delay on it, the note will be, uh, the note will sound again, delayed. So like, bing, 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 like an echo kind of, um, which is a type of delay. Uh, reverb is making it sound like it's in a big space. So bing. And I'll, I'll show you more about what these look like. Um, how do I get out of here? Okay. <clears throat> Stop share. Cool. All right. So we're back on the keyboard screen. I hope you can see it uh, nice, like kind of full screen now. <clears throat> With our remaining time, I want to kind of go over... Um, some some of these extras and show you what they look like so let's start with the pitch i assigned the lfo there to make it so that the joystick added intensity to the lfo and automatically without the joystick there's a tiny bit of lfo on the pitch <clears throat> um alternate modulation source AMS. Oh, whoops. Okay. These are all the things I can assign to be an alternate modulation source on this keyboard for this parameter. Um, so if I choose to do, um, for example, uh, where is it? I'm looking for value slider. If it's on here, I don't know. Uh, whatever. Well, let's say, um, damper, CC64 damper. So this is the damper pedal, the sustain pedal on the keyboard. Um, normally it just does sustain, but now if I add some intensity to it, here's without the pedal. And here's with the pedal. So I was pressing the pedal and letting it go. So that's an example of an alternate modulation source we can use to, you, we can assign any of those things to control this LFO. Um, I'm going to set back, that back to zero because a damper is just practically not a good example of, of using an LFO like that. I don't want the sound to do super vibrato every time I press the damper pedal. Um, that doesn't have a lot of practical applications, but it's there if, if you find one. Um, so we got the filter. We talked about the shape of the filter. 
I can set the filter to an LFO. I can set the filter to an envelope. It's in fact, it's already set to an envelope. Um, if I raise the intensity, now the filter opens and closes according to this envelope. So I'll go to that envelope. Um, see, how, so this shape right here, let me move the camera a little bit. I know we're running short on time. This shape is controlling the filter now. So if I move, if I make the attack time longer, the filter will take longer to open up. Um, if I make it even longer by moving the shape of this a little bit, So I can make that longer, that shorter. Here the filter takes a while to come in now. Um, it's not amp, it's not the volume that's changing. It's actually the frequencies that I'm allowing to go through. Um, let's see. Oh, it's just next master class animation. Okay, cool. Um, so we don't have a lot of time left, so I wanna skip to I want to skip over the step sequencer because it's, it's a little tricky to deal with um, like I said but um, and it's just time consuming so I'm going to skip to effects so this keyboard allows for a lot of effects if you want um, so I'm going to turn effect one on and I have these categories of effects so I can go to EQ, seven band EQ. And this is what the EQ looks like. Right now it's flat, but I can take like the mids, add some mids, maybe add some lows, take away some of the highs. So that's what an EQ can do. I'm gonna go real quick back and uh, make this sound monophonic, which means I can only play one note at a time, which is really helpful. Um, it's helpful for when you're playing leads and you don't want like chords on accident. Um, back to effects. The next effect on, I'm just gonna go through these super quick. So we got um, some amp types, so distortion. Like like a guitar. Um, it's, it's not gonna sound exactly like a guitar. For one, it's a synth sound, so it's a different source tone. And two, um, an amp effect on a computer or a keyboard is never going to be the same it's never going to quite have the same effect as a real guitar amp or a bass amp even. Um, so chorus, we, I kind of skipped over chorus before. This is what a chorus sounds like. So what it's doing is it's kind of a short delay. It's making a double of the sound. So like they're playing together, but kind of off from each other um, so that it, it kind of creates a thicker sound. Um, there are other versions of this kind of like phaser and flanger um, They're they're similar, but I'm gonna skip over those for now uh, For today, but they're they're also kind of cool effects delay like I said does this So delay is used a lot on lead sounds um, And yeah, I'm, I'm keeping track of time um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna keep that delay on there, and then reverb, the magic effect reverb. I'm gonna put a reverb effect on there. I'm gonna turn that down a little bit. I don't want that much reverb. 
fact, I don't want that much delay either. So now we have this sound. I'm going to use it as a bass sound, which we should probably turn the delay off if we're doing that, but let's, details, details. All right, I'm going to use this as a bass sound for real quick. Right, or I can use it as a lead sound with the delay on going. And it sounds cool, <laughs> basically. So uh, that's it. That's my masterclass. We made a, a basic sound. And you can, uh, if you have a keyboard that'll do it, you can adjust whatever things you want and uh, use whatever controllers you want while you're playing to adjust them. Um, and so those are the basic parts of a synth sound. Thank you guys all so much for coming. Uh, this has been kind of fun for me uh, it's just a topic that I love and I'm interested in so thanks all for joining me um, I hope you have a wonderful night